everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the BPSOP Weekly Online Photo Critiques. My name is Mark English. I teach a course here called The Art of Printing and Selling Your Art, where we get you up and running with a color managed workflow so that what you see from your monitor is what you see emerge from your printer. And this week I have the pleasure of reviewing five images with you, beginning with this one from Elizabeth Hogue. And Elizabeth, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Elizabeth has entitled this The Black Stallion Returns, indicates as well that it was uh, shot in Iceland, uh, one of the ever-present Icelandic ponies. Uh, this was shot using a Sony A6000 camera, 250th of a second at f6.3 and ISO 100. She indicates that it was shot at 126 millimeters, obviously a zoom lens. Uh, since the Sony A6000 is a reduced frame sensor camera, uh, this would be equivalent roughly to a 190 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. Elizabeth, I like your choice of the black and white conversion for this image. I think color would add really not that much more to the impact of it. Um, my only suggestion here is that I'm a little troubled by the lack of some space here in the front. I'd like to see a little more anticipatory space, if you will, some room for the horse to be running into. We don't want him to run off the edge of the frame or uh, off the edge of the earth, if you will. The easiest way to uh, show how this could improve the image is to just momentarily take it into Photoshop, which we will do right now. And we've selected the crop tool here and using a new feature in the latest version of Photoshop CC, that's the 2015.5 version. Uh, we've selected a content aware option at the top here and this will allow us to fill in any additional room that we create using the crop tool. So I'm simply going to grab this and we're going to hold down the shift key to constrain me to constrain the proportions of the image so we don't change that. And I think that should do it. Hit enter. And now we have a bit more room for the uh, horse to be running to. Actually, let's uh, add just a bit more here, maybe on the bottom. There you go. I think that's probably a little better. There you go. So uh, the content aware tool here has filled in the area we've added with uh, what it sees around there. It hasn't done the best job since we have some un natural repeating elements here in the uh, background, but I think it's sufficient to show the effect of leaving a bit more room, a slightly looser composition, if you will. We've also, by doing this, created a fairly strong diagonal running from the upper right through the horse's uh, body and down, exiting out the lower left. I think it gives just a, a stronger sense of motion and power in the image. So we're just going to save that back here now to Lightroom, go back, and here is our newly cropped image. Uh, there's the before, there's the after. I think it's a somewhat stronger image. Now, Elizabeth also indicates that um, she didn't try to create a pure black in this, uh, suggesting that black horses are never truly black, and that's certainly true. I don't disagree with that. However, I think that um, the power of black and white comes from uh, shape, form, and most of all, tonality. And I think that every black and white image should have a solid black somewhere in it, and most of them should have a solid white. So uh, this isn't far off. I, I would just simply tweak the contrast. I'm going to do that here in Lightroom since it's the easiest way to demonstrate it. Um, we'll just tweak the contrast a tad. That'll force the dark tones darker and some of the lighter tones lighter. I think it's a, uh, already a somewhat stronger image. I'd also like to see the background here uh, in the far background, uh, the tonality toned down a bit here. Uh, because it's bright and because it's near an edge, it holds greater visual weight and it tends to draw the viewer's eye upward. Uh, there are many ways to correct this. I think you've actually already taken a shot at uh, working the background. I see a bit of a lighter halo around uh, the horse's body around here and here, suggesting, and perhaps I'm wrong, but suggesting that you've worked on this a bit in Photoshop um, with uh, some layer masks. <coughs> so I'm going to darken down the background here with a, um, a 
a neutral density gradient filter. Just going to collect the collect the effects uh, there to zero this out. Just going to drag the uh, exposure down, not pretty much, just a little bit, and we'll create a graduated filter here. Uh, we want a nice soft transition so that the uh, filter doesn't draw attention to itself. Also, since uh, this will darken not only the background but also the the horse is probably something we don't want. So we're going to select the brush tool here in Lightroom, select the erase, and then select a fairly high flow so that the effect of this erasing will build up quickly. We'll keep it relatively feathered. Uh, we'll probably just increase the size a bit here to start with. And we'll just paint over here, and that is removing the effect, as you can see, of our neutral density gradient. Moving the horse's rump there as well. If we want to see the effect that this uh, is happening, we can tap the O key, and that will light up the area that is a uh, mask here, and we'll just clean that up a bit. We can reduce the size of this as we go. Don't have to be perfect with this, since um, the horse's body is already dark, and those elements, if they're left a tiny bit darker uh, than they would otherwise, it's not really a big deal. You won't see the effect of that. Uh, we don't want to go over, as I have, I think, here. So we'll go back to the brush, and we'll select uh, away from that, and sorry, select the A, and take that down a bit, and just make sure that we're not going to leave a halo there. And uh, that's probably good enough. There you go. Turn off the mask, complete our work, and there you go. Um, you might also want to consider just lightening the horse's uh, face, if you will. So we'll zero everything out here again. I'm only going to lighten the uh, highlight areas on this. I don't want to uh, lighten everything. I just want to brighten up the areas that are already a little bright to improve the contrast, if you will. And that will help focus the viewer's attention. And we can also perhaps work a little bit on some of the brighter areas. The musculature here in the horse's chest can be improved a little bit with this as well. And um, there you go. And uh, there you go. That's uh, all I would suggest. I, I like the image a lot. I think it was uh, well photographed. And uh, good job, Elizabeth. Now our next image comes to us from Suzanne Landolt. Uh, Sus Suzanne calls this mysterious, a very apt title. It uh, apparently it's the I hope I pronounce this correctly the Kilchurn Castle in Scotland. Uh, she was there early morning at dawn, and says that uh, she had to wait a while I think from the uh, narrative here uh, for the fog to lift uh, before she managed to take this image. This is taken with a Nikon D4 with a Nikkor 24085 at 52 millimeters, ISO 320 at f11, one sixth of a second. And she indicates that she also used a 0.6 ND Lee graduated filter. Uh, that would be a two-stop soft edge graduated filter. Now, to start off with Suzanne, I absolutely love this image. It's an excellent example of uh, something that you don't see often enough and is usually an element in all of the strongest landscape images that you probably will remember. And that is that it's composed with a definite foreground with these reeds, a middle ground with the shore, and the layer of fog and the castle, and then a distinct background as well with the hills. Uh, it's just a fabulous image. I like the uh, choice of the color balance, a little on the cold side, helps to enhance the, the feeling of mystery. Very small suggestion, uh, really minor actually. I might just push the contrast. I mean, you've done a lot of work to reduce the contrast, which is really good. It's always easier to enhance the contrast in an image than it is to take a very contrast the image and try to reduce that to something more reasonable, particularly if you're trying to fit it onto the uh, dynamic range of a print. So I will just take the contrast slider here in the develop module of Lightroom and I'll just bump that ever so slightly. And what I think that helps to do is create a bit more definition here in what is now your, and I think always was intended to be your primary subject matter. So now we have a primary center of interest a secondary center of interest, 
And this helps to keep our viewer's eye moving through the image from the, the reeds along the shore, through the castle, up through the hills. Anything you can do in your composition to create that sense of movement and keep your viewer's eyes moving through the composition will increase the amount of time that someone will spend viewing it and thereby increase the impact. Suzanne has also chosen, I think deliberately, to place the virtual horizon of this image more or less right in the center. Typically that's not the best choice. We want to commit to either having the sky or the land, or in this case the water, be the major element in a composition. But the one time this works is where you have at least some elements of symmetry in a composition. In this case we have the symmetry of the shore, of the castle, and the castle's reflection. So placing the horizon where she did, I think, was uh, an inspired choice and helps again to make this an absolutely excellent image. Good job to Suzanne. This next image was sent in by Audra Kroll. Uh, Audra indicates that she was waiting for her husband to uh, get off work one night. Apparently he was working quite late and after about a half an hour decided to go for a drive where she noticed this sunset developing. She says she uh, liked the contrast between the woods and the sunset and although she says that she's not happy overall with the settings that were chosen by the camera for this particular exposure. Uh, Audra, the, the main problem with this is that we have a huge contrast between the bright sky and the dark uh, foreground woods and this is one of those few instances where your camera's meter is likely to be fooled. Now, in this kind of situation, you have to decide what's more important. I think, based on the narrative that you provided here, that the sunset is what caught your eye. So what's happening here is that the camera meter is first seeing this dark area down below here and saying, well, there's not enough light here. I have to open up and let more light in. But on the other hand, it's seeing this bright area above in the sky and saying, oh, wait a minute, there's an awful lot of light here. I have to close things down so that less light is in. And in trying to strike a balance, it really ends up in nowhere land. The trick to this for sunsets is to basically reframe temporarily your scene, including mostly the sky. So you want the sky to dominate within your viewfinder. Now on most cameras, and I believe your Nikon would be among them, if you half depress the shutter button, you will lock in the exposure at that moment. You can then, while keeping pressure on the shutter button, quickly reframe your subject and finish pressing the shutter to expose the image. Now what this will do is ensure that the camera meter sees that the sky is the thing that you're most interested in and it will base its exposure on that. So what you'll end up with here is much better saturation and uh, deeper tones. You'll catch more of these crepuscular rays, maybe more evident. Uh, it'll just be a more dramatic sunset with the clouds. Now the foreground here is already quite dark, so you're not going to lose anything by allowing the exposure to be uh, shut down, if you will, to let in less light. Now you could, as an alternative, you could instead uh, move up the shadows uh, values here to show more of what's in the foreground but frankly I think the interest is all here in the sky that's kind of what you indicate in your narrative so uh, we can take a look at that in a moment I can sort of show you how that might have looked uh, if you had based your exposure on the sky. The other thing that bothers me about this Andre is this little thing down here I mean you indicate that you kind of liked it and it's interesting I won't deny that but what happens here is that we're sort of torn between these things. We say, wow, nice sky, but what is this thing here? Nice sky, but what is this? So I think that, um, well, there's two ways to get rid of this. If you like the proportion of foreground to sky, then we can simply here in Lightroom use the uh, spot removal tool, paint over that quickly, and it's gone. Uh, alternatively, um, I think that really, since we want the sky to dominate here, we wouldn't hurt at all by, um, cropping some of this foreground out. So we'll just slip in here into the crop tool in Lightroom and we'll just remove some of this to again allow the sky to more fully dominate the composition. Now I mentioned earlier that if you had based your exposure on the sky then you'd have much more saturated tones. Now in a small uh, 
low res JPEG such as this, it's really difficult to show you what you might have uh, ended up with had you based the exposure on the sky to begin with. But we'll have a try it here. We can start by just dropping down the exposure a bit. Here again, now the foreground is already pretty dark, so we're really not altering the impact of that at all. But we are picking up more saturation here in the tones. We might just uh, push the contrast a little bit. And it makes the darks darker and the lights lighter. In fact, let's even push the highlights up a bit more. And then we can go down here and we'll increase the saturation as well. Now, again, this is a um, not a perfect example of what you would have seen, but I think you can see how this might have developed had you based your exposure on the sky initially and uh, made the sky more dominant in the composition by tipping your camera up just a little bit to include more of that. Other than that, it's a... Uh, it's a good image, a good scene. I think any photographer would have easily pulled over to, uh, to shoot this, so uh, good job. And now we come to our next image, which comes to us from Hernan Quintero. Uh, Hernan has uh, titled this Happy, and based on the name of the actual file, this must be a portrait of Nicholas. Uh, I like this image, Hernan. The uh, technical information here is a little sparse. He indicates that it was shot at f5.6 using a single light source in a studio. Uh, I suspect this is either a large softbox or a uh, umbrella. It's off to camera left, uh, pretty close to the camera, I would guess. So we're seeing that we actually have uh, the main light clipping the nose here a bit, so it can't be too far behind him. It's uh, unconventional lighting for a studio portrait of a of anyone, let alone a small child here now, but I think it kind of works here. I, it almost has the effect of perhaps he's sitting in front of a large window, which is off to his uh, left-hand side. So in that regard, the lighting appears quite natural. Uh, I like your choice of aperture. F5.6 has sufficiently blurred out this old weathered door that you're using as a backdrop. Yeah, you could say that perhaps uh, you should have opened the... Uh, aperture up a bit more to more fully blur it out. It's certainly not distracting, although others might suggest that it could be more fully blurred uh, by the use of a larger uh, lens aperture. Um, I really don't have any technical uh, grievance with the issue, or the image rather, here at all. Or not. Um, the only thing that really kind of bothers me a bit is that the, this image asks more questions than it answers. Uh, the title says happy, and it certainly appears to me that Nicholas is happy. However, I'd sure like to see why he's happy. Uh, clearly something has his attention. Uh, I would say his attention is riveted to something just off to camera right. Um, don't know what that is. It could be a toy. It could be a pet. Maybe the, uh, a sibling or his uh, mother, perhaps, uh, making funny faces at him that has uh, caught his attention. But I'd kind of like to see you know, what it is that has Nicholas so uh, attentive here. So you could either loosen the composition up or incorporate the item, whatever it happens to be that has his attention. Maybe he could be holding it. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is, of course, that is capturing his attention, but that's a minor, uh, minor, I guess, uh, gripe on my part. It's still a very nicely done image. Uh, because the main light source is behind uh, Nicholas, then You've left uh, the plane of the face in shadow, which again I say is an unconventional treatment. We can tweak that a little bit here in Lightroom. I'm just going to use the radial filter, and we'll just draw a radial filter in here. We can change it as we wish. We can rotate it around. Uh, can, we're just going to use this a bit here to lighten up the plane of the face. And then we're going to invert it because right now the area in green will be affected by any adjustments we make with this filter. So we'll invert the mask and now we're only going to affect the plane of the face. And we're also going to affect the background a little bit here, but we can clean that up with some new features in this version of this newest version of Lightroom. So I'm going to turn off the, um, the mask reveal here so that uh, it'll, we'll be able to concentrate on the impact of this adjustment on the plane of the face. So uh, it's really the shadow values here I don't that are need to be uh, tweaked. I don't want to affect the 
uh, mid-tones too much. These nice uh, subtle gradations here would be destroyed if I mess with them too much. So I'm only going to work on the shadow slider and then only a bit. We're going to bring this up a little bit here and I think we'll just flick this on and off. You can see there, you can see the effect. It's fairly subtle but it's there nevertheless and it does bring up more detail in the face. Uh, you could easily have also um, uh, created this effect by having a large white reflector off here to uh, camera right uh, behind the subject a bit to pick up some of the light from the main light and bounce it back in the face. In fact, I suspect you do have a reflector here, although it uh, could probably be a bit closer. Uh, now, the only other thing here, uh, we'll just to tweak this adjustment, we'll turn on the overlay again. You can see we're also affecting the background and we're affecting the brim of the hat here. So I don't really want that effect in there. So we're going to turn on the brush option within the radial filter. And we're going to turn on the erase mode. We're going to select a fairly high flow because we want this effect to build up fairly quickly. And we're going to leave it relatively well feathered so that the transitions are not too obvious. In fact, I think I'll feather that up a bit more. And we'll just increase the size a bit here too. So we'll just remove it from the brim of the hat. No reason to affect that. It's already catching enough light from the main. And we'll remove most of the effect here on the background, just so that the transitions are not so evident or abrupt. And that should do it. We can turn off the uh, overlay mask since we're done. And there you go. So now we can, uh, we'll have a quick look at this again. We'll turn it back on. Here I can turn this off and on, off and on. You can see we are picking up a bit more uh, detail, uh, tonality, if you will, in the plane of the face. I think that's a uh, small but uh, definite improvement. So, Hernan, uh, I am certainly look forward to seeing more of your work here, particularly from the studio. Uh, obviously, you're relating well to your subject, um, and I think that uh, bodes well for uh, the work that we might see in the future. So, good job. Now, this last image comes to us from Tony Colvin. He's entitled it Sweet Guinea Pig. Says that he was practicing his pet photography on this model and as I'm sure would always be the case, had a lot of difficulty getting him to sit still long enough to get this shot. But he did nevertheless. It was shot with a Canon 5D Mark II using a 24 to 105 lens at 105 millimeters. Shot it handheld on manual at a 250th of a second, wide open at f4. He notes ruefully that he uh, should have shot this at a 200th of a second as uh, it was lit with a Canon 580 EX2 uh, strobe to camera right bounced into a white umbrella and using a white reflector to the left. Good lighting choices by the way, Tony. Uh, a 200th of a second is the maximum flash synchronization speed for a Canon 5D Mark II. But since Tony shot it at a 250th of a second, the shutter curtain had already begun to close. And what happens with that is that you end up with a dark shadow across usually the lower uh, dimension of the frame. Uh, Tony indicates that this was the case and that he has already cropped that off. Don't feel bad about that, Tony. Everybody has made that mistake, myself included, uh, in many, many times. Tony, I like this image. I think it's beautifully lit very appropriate to the subject. Um, you indicate in the narrative that you thought that the white reflector to camera left should have been closer as you were disappointed that there was not more light on the shadow side of the subject. Uh, frankly, I, I kind of like that. I think it adds to the charm. You kind of get the impression that this little guy is, uh, is maybe perhaps sleeping and he has just kind of one eye open to checking you out to see what it is you're up to. Um, I think it actually was a, a, perhaps a very fortunate uh, uh, mistake that provided you with a much stronger composition. The image is absolutely sharp where it needs to be on the eye here. Uh, you're obviously going for a high key uh, effect here with the white uh, background, white foreground. Um, the only suggestion I would have here since you are going for a high key look would be to get rid of these uh, shadowy areas. Uh, there are obviously just shadows on the background uh, uh, backdrop, whatever it is that you're using, presumably a white sheet or a white uh, muslin. Um, 
Uh, easiest way to take care of that here in Lightroom is simply to use a, a local brush adjustment. We'll set the highlight uh, up fairly high. Uh, doesn't really matter how high, as long as it's sufficient here. Set the flow fairly high as well, so uh, the effect will be built up quickly. And we're just going to paint over this to um, get rid of these shadows and make them all white like the rest of the background. Pretty easy to do, pretty quick. Maybe one there, not sure there, there, and there you go. I think that um, as much better, stronger, clean up the background. We don't have these distracting shadows back there. Um, as I say, I like the image, well executed. Um, I might have cropped it a little tighter. I don't think that all this space here uh, on um, right hand side of your composition is necessary. Um, it leaves this bright area that perhaps draws your eye over a bit. Um, if you were asked the question, well, what is there here for me to see? Well, the answer is not much. So perhaps we can just crop some of that off. Um, you can crop this any number of ways. Uh, perhaps if you want to print this at a 4, or 5, or 8 by 10, we'll just select that or pre-select that here in Lightroom's uh, crop tool. Um, now we can move this around. Uh, you know, typically we don't like to bullseye the subject. But in this particular case, I think it actually makes a fairly strong composition. It makes the subject front and center. The eye, is, uh, eye of the viewer is drawn straight into the uh, subject as well. That's, as I said, an aesthetic choice. If you uh, preferred, you could easily leave a bit more room here on this, and you could uh, basically crop it any way you like. I don't think that it's really going to detract from the image. Again, I, I kind of like the, um, in this particular case, the, uh, the centered uh, composition, but uh, that's a purely an aesthetic choice. Others might disagree. Good image, Tony, well executed, particularly with the lighting, uh, the emphasis, and the sharpness on the eye. Uh, I like the high key treatment. Uh, good job. So that's it for our critiques this week. I'd like to thank you all for watching and hope that you will join us again next week for another edition of the BPSOP Free Online Photo Critiques. I'm Mark English. Once again, thank you for watching.